part two of the q a if you haven't seen part one yet it will be linked down in the description box below i just want to say before i get started on these questions i'm not taking any more questions now we've got plenty of them to be going on with and this is going to last over a couple of weeks uh one episode a week is probably going to last at least five weeks to get most of these questions answered uh so please no more questions please and thank you and i'm just going to jump in now from where we left off last time and hopefully this will not be nearly as long Miguel Cisneros asks, have you ever been to the US? And was it for something specific or vacation? And what was your first pet? Uh, no, I have never been to the US. I don't really have a desire to go to the US at all. It's not really my kind of place. Uh, it's a lovely country, don't get me wrong. It's just not one that I'm too interested in visiting. My first pet, as I answered in the last video, was a frog. Totally Hamster Advice asks, why did you start YouTube? Um, it's a bit of an odd one because I originally started on a different channel. I've had a couple of different YouTube channels and they've all been for different topics and uh, different things. And my last one that I had was just random videos. And while I had that channel, I was part of the forum Hamster Central. And I used to spend days and hours and hours on that. And everyone used to share their videos by posting them on YouTube and then putting a link onto the forum for everyone to watch it. So I started uploading my videos onto my old channel to put them onto Hamster Central on the forum. And then I decided that my channel was getting a bit messy because it had all these weird videos and then all these hamster videos and bits and pieces. And I like, I like tidy channels where it's just one subject per channel. I like those a bit better. So to tidy up my YouTube accounts, I opened a new one just for my hamster videos. And if you go back and look at my original videos, they are just cute footage of, of my hamsters being adorable and sweet and lovely and I didn't actually start doing hamster care or hamster tutorials for quite a few months after I started this channel um, and I originally started doing the care videos because uh, I just found it easy to explain things to people if I could show them rather than explain it through writing like I was doing on the forums so I would make the videos and send them to people just to explain things a little bit better and that kind of just grew and people started subscribing and watching my videos and commenting on them and it just sort of happened and I didn't expect it to but it did and I think that's probably the best way to start a YouTube channel Ooh, someone's messaging me. Animal Expert asks how high can a Robberowski hamster climb without falling? Um. Now it depends on how daring the Robberowski is. They can climb quite high, actually, but I just wouldn't recommend putting a Robberowski in that kind of situation where it can climb, because hamsters can be little daredevils, and many of them do like to just throw themselves off the bars when they get to the top, or they just let go. I don't know why. Some of them will climb back down, um, but they do like to just launch themselves off it, because they're strange like that. So if you do have a Robo that is climbing quite high, which I'm possibly guessing you do, which is why you're asking that question, I would recommend either putting your Robo in a tank style cage, tanks are the best for Robberowskis, they're perfect cages for them, a Robo and a glass tank perfectly matched together, um, either doing that or putting in a lot of hammocks and shelves and things in case your Robo does decide to climb to its absolute highest point and throw itself off so it can at least be caught and safe and it's not going to get hurt. Happy Hamsters asks, what is your favourite sport if you had to pick one? I'm not really a sports person, I don't watch sports, I don't play sports. I used to play sports when I was younger, I used to be on um, our school's rugby team and I have a trophy for rugby. So I don't think I could really pick a team, but I suppose gun to head I would, I would go ahead and say rugby because I can sit and watch that and understand what's going on. Um, but yeah, sport's not really my thing. What's your favourite colour? My favourite colour specifically is emerald green. And what do you use to edit your videos? I use Sony Vegas 12. I've always used Vegas for all of my videos. Um, I haven't always used version 12 because it's quite new. I originally used version 9 and that was brilliant and I really recommend it. Um, and I recommend if you want to get it cheaply, go and buy the program off somewhere like eBay or Amazon second hand. You will get it for an absolute steal of a price compared to the original. Amana M asks, will you be getting any more pets in the future? If so, what would it be or what would you like? Um, yeah, we probably will be getting pets in the future. My next pet that I would like to get would be a dog. We can't get any more pets while we're living here. This is literally all this room is the space we have. And we have this me and Dan and Jack who takes up most of the room and the two hamsters and their cages. So we don't have the space for any more animals. Um, but when we do have the space, well, first of all, I'd like to get a second rabbit for Jack. I desperately want to get him a friend um, because rabbits should always live in pairs and groups. The only reason he's on his own is because obviously he came from a really weird situation, sort of just turned up in our lives one day. We didn't actually go out to get a rabbit um, and I never planned on ever owning a rabbit. I'm not, I mean, I wasn't really that interested in them, 
But I love having my little Jack, but I would like to get him a friend first of all. But the next new animal I would get is more than likely going to be a dog. Um, but I'd also like to get some mice, some rats, um, a cat, obviously. Everyone loves cats. Happy Hamster Barlow asks, Hey, me and Millie want to know how much and should we get a rabbit? I'm 13 and Millie is 9. To be honest, my complete honest opinion, having had Jack in our lives, is that if you aren't in any kind of situation where you're getting um, money come into your life, you know, financial ness in your life, then a rabbit is not the pet for you. They are so expensive um, and there's so much you need to do for them. You've got to pay for their neuterings uh, or spayings if it's a female. There's their vaccines every year, vet trips, obviously. They live for 10 years and that's a lot of time to be, you know, going without vet trips. They're obviously going to need vet trips in that time, so that's vet bills to consider. They go through a ridiculous amount of hay every single month, spend an absolute fortune on hay. It's absolutely crazy. Uh, the food we spend a fortune on. And this, it's just always money. When it comes to rabbits, all I'm seeming to find is that it's money, money, money. It's completely worth it. It really is. But don't put yourself in the situation of getting a rabbit if you aren't financially ready for it. And the other thing to consider is because you're very young, your rabbit is likely to live about 10 to 12 years. That's the average lifespan of rabbits. Um, which means you will have the rabbit until you're 23 and Millie will be 19. Now you have to consider the fact that around those ages you will possibly go be going off to college or university or maybe moving out or maybe even starting your own family at, at 23, you never know. Um, so you've got to think ahead, you've got to plan for the future, you've got to plan for the thought of if, if you want to go to university or you want to go to college or anything like that, what's going to happen to the rabbit? You have to consider these things because rabbits are a lifetime commitment. They are just as much commitment as a small dog. Um, I would definitely not say they're any less commitment than a small dog because they, they take up the same amount of time in your life, um, bar the walking, obviously, but they, they just require so much time and money and an entire lifetime of care. So please, if you do want to get a rabbit, I'm not trying to discourage you, but think very carefully about that decision. Go do a lot of research into the financial side of it. Go do a lot of research into what you need to do to care for it. The cage, uh, if you're not having a house rabbit and it lives outside, the cage has to be at least six foot by two foot by two foot with, I believe, an eight foot by four foot run permanently attached to it. Rabbits need a heck of a lot of space. So please go do your research into it. Um, consider it very seriously. They are a very serious, long-term pet. And please don't get a rabbit just because they're sweet or cute or anything like that because you're going to have them for a very long time and they need your full dedication and your full responsibility. Caden Hernandez asked, what was your first hamster and what was its name? My first hamsters were actually a pair of Roborowskis. They were sisters. And I should mention before I say what their names are, I was told they were male when I got them. Well done, useful pet shop. Uh, for nine months, I believe they were male, in fact, or until they were nine months old, anyway, when I found out they were female. So they were named um, Galaxy Cookie Crumble and Truffle Creme Prince of Bobtails. And even when I found out that they were girls, I still called her the Prince of Bobtails. So that, that name stuck. They were too old for me to change it, so that's the way it was. Jessica Jeffers asks, I have two Chinese hamsters called Bubble and Squeak. They're just under a year old. They're brothers and get on very well. Soon I'll be getting a big cage and they're, as they're growing and I believe they require more space. However, people have told me that they should not be together and that I'm a bad... Oh no, sorry, there's a read more button here. Oh goodness, you really did ask a question, didn't you? <laughs> um, I've had a winter white dwarf and a Syrian before and they both lived in nearly four years. They never seem to fight. Uh, they have the occasional squeak at each other but they never bite or hurt each other, I need my glasses, and haven't and haven't since I got them in October 2013. Should I keep them together because they're very close and sleep together and will not run on the wheel unless they're together? They even eat together and share the food, or should I separate them as many have told me to do? Right, I will say straight up, Chinese hamsters are solitary hamsters and they should live alone. My personal recommendation is that you split them up. I know they're close now, but you never ever know when they're suddenly going to turn on each other and, and fight and start attacking each other. Um, and it's just better for them to be apart. Now, the reason many people think they can live together is because pet shops and all sorts of people who sell them, sell them as dwarf hamsters just because they're small. They're not dwarf hamsters. Dwarf hamsters are... Um, a special little group of hamsters and they live in colonies and that's part of their natural instinct. Syrian hamsters and Chinese hamsters 
Both of them obviously not dwarf hamsters, but both of them have one thing in common, and that's that they're solitary animals, and they live happier lives living on their own, and they live actually more stressful lives living with hamsters of the same species. So I do recommend that you separate them. I know it might be a bit difficult um, because obviously you like seeing them together and they seem to be very happy together. It is the best thing for them. Um, and they won't, they won't get depressed. This is the big difference. When you separate dwarf pairs that are really close together, they do suffer from a type of depression. They do miss their partner. I found a lot of the times when my robos lost their cage mate, they would mourn for them. They'd go, they'd become very depressed and they wouldn't eat and they just, they wouldn't be able to get on so well for a couple of weeks. Chinese hamsters, uh, when they're separated, don't tend to go through this. This kind of shows that they don't have the same kind of strong, um, necessary bond that dwarf hamsters have with each other. And so they are going to be okay if you separate them. They are going to be fine and happy and they won't miss each other. Uh, the one thing I do want to point out, though, is that you said here that um, people have told me they should not be together and that I'm a bad owner, but I had no idea when I bought the hamsters uh, that when I bought them they should be generally kept alone. And this is the thing that gets me, is how many people call owners who keep Chinese hamsters or Syrian hamsters together bad owners. Syrian hamsters, okay, that is kind of down to not doing research and stuff like that. But when it comes to Chinese hamsters, there's a massive amount of confusion here because the pair shops are selling them as dwarfs. They're actually advertising them as having to live in pairs, which is completely wrong and irresponsible and just uneducated of the shops who do that. Now, not all pet shops do that, I'm just saying, but I've seen quite a lot of them that do, especially the large chain ones. And there's just so much confusion over whether they're dwarfs or whether they're not dwarfs, whether they're solitary, whether they live in groups. So in no way does that make you a bad owner if you didn't know, because, I mean, how are you supposed to know when there's so much confusing information going around? So please ignore those people calling you a bad owner. They clearly have no empathy of any kind, and they've... They, I don't know whether they're people who think that, you know, that mistakes don't happen or something like that, but everyone makes mistakes. It happens for all of us, and you definitely shouldn't feel bad about having done it. But all the same, I do recommend that they are separated from now on. Lucy McRoberts asks, How big does a Syrian hamster cage have to be in centimetres? That all depends on your country. Every country has a different minimum uh, size, and the minimum size means you can't have a cage any smaller than that. The church bells are going. I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Ding, 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 ding. The minimum size in centimetres if you live in the United States or you live in Canada is 60 by 40 centimetres. And a cage should be at least 30 centimetres tall and that's just to fit in um, a decent sized wheel. Now, if you live in the United Kingdom or you live over here in Europe, the size is quite a bit bigger. The animal care is just um, a little bit more, I wouldn't say advanced, but I would say expectations are higher on this side of the planet uh, or on this side of the pond, I suppose. Um, and the, the minimum size over here is 80 by 50 centimetres, again, with at least 30 to 40 centimetres of height in there. Uh, but these are the minimums set down by both hamster associations and animal welfare groups for the different countries. So, completely dispense. US, Canada, 60 by 40 centimetres. Uh, UK, Europe, 80 by 50 centimetres. And I should say, Syrian hamsters don't actually have bigger cages than dwarf hamsters. Dwarf hamsters are typically more energetic than Syrians, and so they need equal size cages. There's no special measurement for a Syrian and special measurement for a dwarf. They all should have the biggest cage you can get your hands on. So that's going to have to be it for this week's Q&A, otherwise it's going to go on forever. Um, there will be another episode next week, continuing on from where we have left off. This is definitely going to be a series that goes on for a couple of weeks, so please, no more questions. We have so, so many of them. It took me so long to get to this part of the comment section to find this set of questions. It's unbelievable. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you for asking the questions. I hope those people whose questions I answered today are happy with the answers they got. Um, Yes, and don't forget part one is linked in the description box in case you haven't seen it already. And now it's the weekend, so we can go and all relax and sleep and have a wonderful time. I hope you have a lovely weekend, a couple of days off school or work or whatever it is you do in the week time. And take care of yourselves, of course. I will see you tomorrow if you're on my other channel, Monday if you're only here. Bye-bye, guys.